episode we're still in Spain we're almost at the end of our season and it's time to head up the coast we need to get from Alicante through a few anchorages Calpe Gandia and then onto our wintering location of Valencia but tonight we're going to try and anchor under the rock at Calpe and hopefully get a good night's sleep good morning everyone we are leaving Alicante we've just left it's about five miles behind us and we are heading towards an anchorage for this evening about how far away is it Nick? It's about 30 miles. About 30 miles away. <laughs> and uh, yeah this is the first of three consecutive day sails until we get to Valencia which is all very exciting. Once again we have very very light winds and so we've got the sails up but we've also got the engine on and I tell you what I don't know when the day will come that we can turn that engine off but I'm very much looking forward to it. islands and fish farms in the way and we're coming around a cape so the wind's been quite fluky and it's right on the nose now so we just drop the main jibs fell away and we're just enjoying the uh, lovely motion of motoring into swell tell you what next time we're sailing downwind I'm gonna really appreciate it or even like just sailing, any old sailing actually. You know what, in this entire trip down the coast, we have not sailed down with at all. We have, I don't think we've actually had the wind back of the beam. I don't think we've had the wind on the beam. I think we've been close hauled if we've been sailing. Well, we were close hauled because there's been such light winds that we're essentially the yeah. it's, it's apparent wind that we're making ourselves through the motor. Yeah. Yeah, so the sails just assist the motor. Yeah. Um, there's wind today, just not in the direction Part of our sailing's day took us past the infamous resort of Benidorm. Many years ago I'd have loved this place but for now, well, I want something a little bit quieter, a little bit more sedate and a little bit less sangria. different things my love why you know beautiful places in spain why would anyone go there because in all fairness you could probably argue the same i'm sure people watch our videos when they're just kind of looking through gaming channels and happen to <laughs> find some of our kind of slightly clickbaity titles and go why the hell would anyone do this for a living for a life you know this is in, in the same way that this is this really is probably the reality of it rather than the kind of the dream or the, the perception of it is probably far less pleasant for most people than being over there. Yeah, still. So, 
welcome to the foredeck of Yacht Ruby Rose on a bright and beautiful Thursday morning somewhere off the Spanish coast. It is truly, truly stunning out here. They literally, if you look over to the mountains, like you can see like there's a, someone's lit a fire or someone's house is burning down and there's this kind of like slow waft of smoke drifting over the valley floor. It's pretty intense and pretty awesome. The reason that we are sat on the foredeck, apart from the fact that it's just a nice place to be, um, we have had some intermittent problems with our furling mechanism on the jib and it's been a bit of a doozy. I can't really work that out what it is. Um, it would unfurl perfectly and then you'd find that it just wouldn't furl again, it would jam. And so when you've got a light wind day, literally there is no wind at all I think, Beaufort category is one is smoke rises up straight. So this, uh, and this is where we are. Literally, the only wind we've got is the wind we are creating. So uh, it's a good good day to get the jib out, let it flog a little bit, not flog, but just flap a little bit, and give us an, a chance to diagnose what's going on. To the point at which I actually even managed to get the jib. That we took the jib down. We kind of like to put it on deck to look at the top of the furling mechanism, and as such. I have some conclusions. Um, firstly, you know, as Judge Judy says, if it sounds like a duck and looks like a duck, it's more likely a duck. And I found a loose screw, which basically meant that the furling mechanism, as you were furling, it was the, the kind of guide was spinning around, so that would cause resistance. I'm just trying to eliminate resistance through the entire process. So it's all the bullseyes that kind of lead back to the furling line, there's no problem there. So I've got it down to a couple of things. Either, and I think this is the most likely thing, we spent, because it was working fine. When we left Bermuda, it was fine, right? Yes. And then when we got to Bermuda, when we got to the Azores, and from the Azores to Portugal, it was, it was a bit dicky. So what I believe, the most likely thing is that um, it was rough enough for us to get, like continually get a build up of salt in it, like waves coming over the deck, get into the furling mechanism, crystallize, more salt, more salt, more salt, and it was, so I think more than likely, what's happened is there's so much salt water gone into it that it's just got an accumulation of salt in it. So um, what I've done is, as a temporary fix, I've uh, used this. Now, of all the lubricants you should keep on board uh, a cruising yacht, this is one WD-40 silicon, or any silicon-based product, because it's water resistant, and also it doesn't get, like if you use oil, or you know, you can get you get stains on your lines, silicon based one is, is really bloody good. So what I've done is there are some access holes inside, it's a closed furling mechanism. So I've literally just gone, gone to town with this, flushed out what I can see, and that will get us a temporary fix for hopefully, well, we've only got a couple of more sales to do, but it'll get us a temporary fix. And then what happens next is, and this is what I learned the hard way, don't do things at sea, uh, the way you could drop bits. So um, the next stage for us is gonna be um, when we get probably out of the water uh, and we've got the sails off, I will take that furling mechanism apart with an umbrella underneath it um, to catch any bits because I've dropped screws in boat yard before and once they bounce, they're gone. So I will take it all apart have a look at the bearings. There should be a ring of, of uh, hopefully there'll be open bearings rather than sealed bearings, but normally you can see bearings. Um, so there'll be a bearing in there. Either the bearings are worn, which basically means that over the last five or six years, what will have happened is that the little ball bearings will have just either got covered in salt and be worn on one side so they won't spin properly, or um, it's just salt accumulation. So clean it out. If that doesn't fix it, we will come back with a bearing kit. A bearing kit for these is so, it's, they're not expensive. Um, and we'll just replace the bearings. It's literally just boat maintenance 101. So in the same way that, you know, in the next couple of years I'm gonna need cod liver oil tablets for my knees. Um, your boat, as it gets a little bit older and the further, you know, gets a little bit more use, it's just gonna need a bit more. Anyway, so I've done that. Um, so I've got my, my star-shaped spanner uh, screw set and my WD-40 silicon. And I'm sat on the bow of this beautiful yard. It is stunning here, isn't it? You know what, as I've said this like a hundred times already, like looking at all these buildings and all these kind of faceless towns that we end up in, they were all built in the 80s by the looks of the architecture and the 70s, which I believe is when the kind of like the, the, the holiday industry took off here. But before that, this must have just been 
like crazy beautiful, right? You know? Crazy what? Beautiful. Like it's so rugged and wild. It's probably some of the wildest scenery we've seen. But it's just kind of like interspersed with this balls. This carbuncle on an otherwise rugged but beautiful landscape. We are at anchor in uh, Calpe. It's a little bit of swell working its way into the anchorage. Um, yes, we'll see how that pans out. I'm a little bit envious of this catamaran behind us because they aren't rocking around at all. It's alright if we're facing into the swell. Uh, but yeah, that was just another day of motor sailing really. Uh, not particularly exciting. Sorry about the focus. I don't know what's going on there. There we go. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. We're just trying to get to Valencia at the moment. So it's like every day it's just counting down the miles. And uh, the sailing itself isn't particularly exciting or, you know, existent. <laughs> um, but at least they're making some progress, so that's a good thing. And join us next week as we finally get some respite from the searing Spanish heat. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you like what we do and you want to see what we do every week, then please hit that subscribe button. There we go. Cheers, bye.